everyone. So this is um, your first revision lesson for the week on creative writing. So it's going to be uh, one this week and one uh, next week. Uh, that's it. Just just two stories over the uh, sorry two lessons over the next couple of weeks, just to keep us ticking over. Um, I've tried to do something interesting with creative writing that's actually more um, individual to you as people. So this is different to what we've done before. Um, so I'll uh, guide you through it. This um, piece that you can see on the screen now is your worksheet for the week as well. So um, it will double up. And that's my cat just to... <laughs> I've been basically using my own photos this week um, because I want you to see maybe a new way of writing from your own experience. Okay. So I had this idea when I was out for... A, uh, obviously... As you'll see when you read the text here, but we, we're obviously very restricted at the moment in what we can do, but touch wood, um, we are still allowed that daily walk at the moment, which obviously is really important for for all of us. Certainly for me, that's something that I've started to do a lot more of. I'm aware that some people watching the video might not be able to go for the daily walks. They might not be well, or they might be, um, they might be completely isolated in the house. Uh, you can still do this lesson with no problem. You'll just need to use images that you find online. So that might be that you choose a place and you think of five images of that place and you connect them somehow. Um, but the the lesson's designed as well to be done as a creative project. The idea is um, that you're going to take your daily walk and use that as an inspiration. OK, so I've written a few bits there. Um, so what I did, um, I'm currently isolating in Lancashire. So with family um been here for about three weeks now and it's a sm very very small rural area so um and i've been trying different routes every day sort of to just take in the scenery and on one of the walks i um i thought why do i know what i could do here why don't i take some pictures of the landscape and see if we see if we can turn those into a writing project which is what i did so I started with this image here, which was my favourite image. I'm just going to zoom the screen out a little bit so you can see, um, which is this image of, um, so basically where I currently am is like a long country road that's about, um, it's about, it takes about half an hour to walk down it, the full length of it, and then you go back on yourself and it's like surrounded by countryside. Um, and I just really like this black and white image that I took of the tree and it made me think, okay, what could I what could I do with this? So I decided to turn it into um, a kind of a horror story. N not not really scary horror, more like a suspense story with this tree as a character in the story. Um, you'll see when you if you want to pause the video and just have a have a read of, of what I'm what I've said here about this image and what it what it said to me. Um, you can pause the video now and just have a quick look at that and I'll take the zoom off so you can see it and I'll also zoom in the screen. Okay, let me pause the video now. Okay, so you've read you've read my ideas. The next thing is if you just have a look through these images, um, and this is basically so these are just taken on my daily walk. So this one of the farmhouse with the flag, the Union Jack flag actually flying. I deliberately took this one in black and white because I thought it would add to the atmosphere. Uh, another one of the surrounding countryside, this time this is an image with a horse as you can see in the field and we're surrounded here with these, um, it's a very agricultural region of Lancashire that's known for its soil that's very good for growing things so lots and lots of plants are grown in these huge greenhouses that kind of stretch on for miles. Um, yep yeah, that's kind of the landscape, it's pretty flat um, and, and a lot of fields. Okay, same again, this is the top of the road. Then at the end of the road, I realised there was this Methodist church, which is which is completely shut down, so no one goes in there. So again, that gave me a bit of an idea for a story. Um, but it did have this poster outside that says, um, what if everything Jesus said was true, which I found quite interesting. Um, then again, towards the end of the street, there's this house that's completely abandoned, but it, it's got these trees in front of it, which I just thought was, was really good as, as, as a kind of a location. Again, the top of the street, that's the house that I just showed you from a different angle. And this is a front of the church. So this is a, like a Methodist church that's not in use currently. 
Um, just a nice row of trees that I quite liked. And again, this there's a lot of this in the landscape where you get um, rivers. Um, they, they, I actually think they might be for for um, irrigation of the land or something like that. I'm not I'm not an expert, but and the sky as well was is quite a big feature. Okay, I think this is the final once again. Just gives you a bit of an idea of of the landscape. That one okay so what i decided to do was i i, I um as you, you guys that are in my access class know that i've got a, a student who um he's very good at creative writing she's been getting consistently grade nines across all her work so i sent her those images via hangouts and i said what comes into your mind when you see these images so if you could just pause the screen now and have a read of what she said okay so that those words that I've highlighted in bold, the idea of desolation and um, the idea of old and new worlds colliding, that just gives me an idea of some of the themes that could go into this story. Um, so what I decided to do, because I knew I wanted to make it into a piece of writing, so I decided to choose five images from the ones you've just looked at and each image would be the inspiration for a paragraph, but all of the images would be connected. Okay. I would use the ideas of those words that Emma gave me that you could do yourself or you could ask somebody else to give you some words that they would connect with the image to help me plan. And I decided that I was going to use the same image in the first and last paragraph. And I recommend you do this because you then guarantee a circular ending, which um, is a good way of increasing the grade, especially under content, because that makes the structure um, much more um, coherent. For me, the image that had the most potential was the tree. So that's what I decided to do. And then I wrote that into a story and I called it Tree of Life, of De Life and Death. It's not the best title in the world, but I do recommend giving the story a title. So I'm going to just show you each paragraph on the screen. And I'd like you to pause the screen and read the paragraph. And then I will come back to you when you have read the paragraph and we just have a bit bit of a discussion well it's not really a discussion but I'll just go over some of the main points so pause the screen now and have a look at paragraph one okay so paragraph one then was first of all these these two minor sentences at the beginning um don't be afraid to do that a lot of what a lot of people do in the writing is they'll say it was the morning and there was a beautiful sunrise and they're telling me rather than showing me so it's fine to have a couple of minor sentences like this but these are just standalone uh, nouns actually so morning and sunrise and then i've immediately gone in with a simile because for me the um tree looked like fingers or kind of the hair of, a, of a, you know spidery branches that I felt there was a lot of imagery in there okay I put in a bit of flashback and then I come back to describing the tree so the tree is like the center of this story okay um paragraph two okay pause the video now and please have a read of paragraph two Okay, so I've done the same again. I've this I've I've located where we are. So and I chose this image of the stretch of road. So this paragraph um, describes the stretch of road, where we are, what the, the the stretch of road offers escape, and also I've tried to make there's a, a suggestion of things being quite sinister because I've said you know there are houses and families here, but you wouldn't know it. Part of that might be because when I do go on these walks, um, I don't usually see anybody. So, it do, um, But that's part of the coronavirus situation. We're not really seeing people at the moment. Um, these two colours here that you can see, well, actually three colours, sapphire, pear and juniper green. They came from the colour thesaurus, which I'll put the link up Um at the end of this assignment so you can have a look at that you should try and vary um your color vocabulary it can really make a difference okay paragraph three pause the screen um round about now while i just zoom out the screen yep if you just pause the screen now okay so paragraph three was based on the uh, Methodist Church. I've again, I've I've repeated this pattern of of, of of kind of showing us 
you know, we, we, it's three o'clock now, so the, the day's moved on. Um, again, sapphire, granite, smoke. These are all words for grey that I took from the uh, coloured thesaurus and iron as well. This time I'm describing the church and I've tried to put in a flashback. Um, this is what it used to be like. It used to be hopeful. It used to be full of um, the, the real routine of people singing and people praying. But that was before. And I don't say what has happened. So I'm trying to create a bit of mystery. And then I flash forward to the present time. And again, and then I flash back and I say it was locked up years ago. But no one can tell you where the key is. But I bring the tree back in again because I'm I'm using the tree as it, with personification at this point. Okay, paragraph four, if you just want to pause the screen now. Okay, so this is paragraph four, and I decided to use the image of the deserted house behind the trees. Um, and I'm talking, I'm just saying that the branches are skeleton branches, gnarly tree bones. I've tried to, to um, connect skeleton and bones there to reflect this sense of sinister i've used fern instead of green i have used red there it's okay to occasionally use the kind of primary color words but i like like a bit of variety i'm i'm shifting focus within this and so i'm going inside the house and i'm telling you what the house used to be that it used to be um a house that was hab inhabited by humans but now it isn't and i've used you guys will remember day after day month after month year after year that triadic sort of structure there that works quite well Okay, and then I've ended that on lifeless and desolate, which reflects what I did at the beginning with the two the two nouns. Okay, final paragraph, if you just uh, want to pause the screen now. Okay, and you've seen the fi final paragraph that I've got that circular ending, I've come back to the tree image, midnight black. It's, it's not a bad thing to have um, a sentence like that that's a standalone minor sentence. It really, don't, so one of the weaknesses I'm finding in some of the writing is that people just repeat the same sentence structure over and over again and it does get quite repetitive. Okay, and then I've left us on what's called a cliffhanger ending, just in case, because we don't really know what's going on in the background of this. Okay, so where would you fit in into all this? Well, I wanted you to have an example, so that's your example. And this is your task for over Easter. So I'm going to give this two week time limit. So you've got long time to do it. But you can submit it to me at any point over the next two weeks. The idea is you take your phone with you on a daily walk. Um, take photos of what you see. Try and take 10 so that you can select. When you get back, you choose five of those images that you could build a story around. And you decide on the one image from the 10 that you think is the one that is the most powerful that it's gonna recur at the beginning and the end. You then use the template below to write a story based on the images. Um, if you're able to put them into the doc, brilliant. If you're not, then we'll have to think of a way around that. Um, it might be that you, you attach them to your submission or you email them to me or whatever, if the, whatever we need to do, but it would be good to see the images. I appreciate that some of you may be unable to leave your house at all, and I absolutely understand that. Therefore, I've given you the option of selecting images from the internet. So it might be that you have a favourite place in your hometown or um, a museum that you've been to, or I, I don't know, and you just choose five images from that place, that location. So the images can be from the internet, but they need to be connected somehow. Um, you could, I suppose, ask a friend or a family member to go and take some photos when they go on their daily walk. It's, but I'm not telling you what to do. It's a difficult time. But if you are going on walks and you do have a camera on your phone, which a lot of people do these days, then it's something I thought might be a fun project. The idea is you will then put your image into the left hand side here um, and then you'll write a paragraph connect so you can connect that image. Um, you'd then hand that in to me up at the top, turn in, hand in, and I will mark that as I would out of 40 for a normal GCSE piece of writing. Okay, any questions, queries, just reply to this post. I really hope that this is something you enjoy and it's a bit more personalised to you because you're selecting the images yourself. Okay, thank you. Thank you.